people that uh, fell for the clickbait of the clickbaity kind of clickbait title and clickbait thumb. But it's not clickbait if we're actually showing you the thing that we're baiting you with, you know? That kind of makes me, I mean, if I'm really good at clickbaiting, doesn't it make me a master baiter? I think it does. Did anyone see that joke coming? Nobody did. So I'm here by myself, except for the other people that are there. Exactly. Um, so there's uh, Yoshi, who you know from the videos with Yoshi. Um, a boutique kind of a luthier. He's probably going to shake his head like, what is boutique? What does that mean? It's good stuff. So when you buy good shit, handmade, that's called boutique. Right, Yoshi? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and uh, then there's Anulf, who uh, had an idea for something that I would call, you know, semi-fucked up. But there's a story behind it. <laughs> there's a story behind it. So this man is used to playing... Uh, double neck guitars because it's got one of those Richie Sombora ovation things. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So he likes to have a big thing on his lap. Um, to lo a lot of us, that would be something that, you know, we use in a situation where um, we absolutely need it. On stage, you need to go from 6th string to 12th string, uh, from an 18-string bass to a ukulele, whatever kind of crazy double neck you want. Um but he actually plays that at home for fun. I don't know. Maybe he's smoking things. Who knows? But he actually has fun. And he also you know, has normal electric guitars and stuff. So Anuf wanted, uh, and he, he loves playing nylon strings. But then how do you have a nylon string on stage and switch back from that to an electric guitar, which you also need, um, flawlessly? Well, of course, you can get one of those stands that holds the acoustic. And then, you know, have your electric here on your back and then you walk up to it. That guy's cool. Um, and then you play and then you go back and all that stuff. That's, of course, doable. Or as I say in French, le duable. But, uh, or in Hungarian, actually, le duable, I think. Why Hungarian? You don't know. <laughs> Yoshi does. Isn't that Hungarian? No? No? Okay. Definitely well, not. Yeah, what do you know? So, um... <laughs> Where was I? Okay, so you can walk up to the thing with the stand, but how original is that? Well, for Arnulf, it's not original enough. Um, so he wanted a nylon string with a piezo um, and an electric guitar that's rather flexible in one. And then he he went online and uh, couldn't find one. Whoa, what a shocker! I mean, that's a kind of specific kind of thing. But then... Uh, he was like, well, let's get more specific. I like his reasoning because if you have a guitar like this with headstocks, it can get top heavy. Well, I mean, the double neck body is already heavy. So does it get top heavy? It can. Um, is it then comfortable to play? No, because it does this thing all the time. You're like a bobblehead. So... Let's go online and try to find a double neck electric, flexible electric with nylon string piezo that's headless. No way in hell you can get that. And then, okay, get this. I don't know what these Austrians are smoking, but it's heavy as shit, okay? And then, come on, come on, right? You were, show Arnulf again. Arnulf, you were stoned as fuck, right? <laughs> right? You, you were like, dude, dude, I want like nylon, but then, you know, headless. And then why don't we just make it a flying V? Ah, uh, wait, can I say this? Because Gibson's going to sue me just for saying that. Fuck you, Gibson. Um, let's call it a V-ish kind of, I can say the word V because that's just a letter, right? A V type. Roads, roads, kind of, because it's not, it's not rounded off in the back. It's pointy, pointy. A uh, roads, please, roads, kind of a thing. Um, yeah, that was his idea. How am I sitting? Um, and now, that's messed up. Okay. Now to find someone who is as messed up to build that. 
And when he brought the idea to Yoshi, he didn't actually bring it to him. As far as I understand, um, he, I'm telling their story. They're just sitting there hanging out, um, reading my magazines. So he had a guitar to be fixed at Yoshi's uh, shop. And they got talking and he just brainstormed the idea to him. And Yoshi was like, <sighs> not because of the money, because Yoshi doesn't charge enough for his guitars, but because... That's a builder's creative playground. Problem solving. How in the world do I turn that into an actual instrument? So um, that's how that... Yes, go ahead. At the first time, he just asked me, is it possible to build some kind of guitar like this? And I said, yes, because I, I wasn't sure how serious he meant. <laughs> you know? People asking me sometimes things just to, just to know if it's possible or not. And I said yes. So the next time he came up with a with a um, some kind of picture, and I saw this guitar on his picture. I said, "Yeah, this this is something I would like to do." Well, usually as a, as a builder, I would say, "Is it possible?" Yeah. If you have the money, sure, it's possible. You know, but are you willing to pay for it? Well, that's where Yoshi is the messed up one here because he just doesn't charge enough for his guitars. So if you're looking for Uh, super mega ultra custom messed up in the head kind of guitar then Yoshi is the man because he won't charge you you know out your ass um, so this video for me I don't know what it's for them I have no idea why they're here for me this video isn't about get the as Arnulf calls it the HA or the HA you can't say HA because that's not it's got to be the HA because it's you know it's heavy it's the heavy acoustic so you can never say it's the luck Ha, huh? because that's just, it's a ha! You know, you gotta get really make people jump. But hey, what's, what's the name of this guitar? It's a ha! And then when, when, they, when they jump back, they will remember. So I don't remember that. You gotta scare people with the name. It's marketing, it's marketing! So um, I don't want you to say, oh yeah, let me order that right away, because you very likely don't want a Jackson B double neck with an acoustic headless. There's probably two people in the world that want that, and one of them is on my couch. But it's an exercise in what a great custom luthier can do if you work with him and make your dreams come true. This is a make your dreams come true kind of episode, which is also why we have a dreamy kind of a Mr. Google shift. Because it's exclusive and something very hoity-toity, um, apparently they brought their own butler to serve them and serve the guitar to me. But before we actually go to the guitar, I think we should look at the prototype because I can get that. Because I think Yoshi didn't want to just really go into the final woods and the final specs and, you know, maybe waste time and money doing the actual thing. Just looking at a, a sketch of what the guitar should look like. So they're talking about the same thing. Is it correct? Yeah, yeah. So this is something you threw together roughly, right? Uh, yeah, very rough. So 10, 15 minutes, this was done um, easily. But it was already, you know, checking out what bridge do we want to use? Uh, how big is it even going to be? What's the shape going to be like? I mean, these are all things like, do you want to really build the final thing? Especially if the final thing is not something that exists in anywhere. That was actually my biggest problem to to um, take the size from the picture and to make it real and to see is it gonna be too big or too small or whatever. It's easy when you do and and Arnold did a Photoshop kind of a thing, right? It's easy in Photoshop to do, you put some pickups on there and all this, but will those specs actually hold up in a real instrument where you need electronics cavities and uh, you know tuner buttons and need certain space? Maybe it doesn't even pan out to work. Um, so this is the prototype they built, which I assume kind of works. Does it work? Uh, not really. It doesn't really have a... No, no, not really. It doesn't really have electronics. No. Um, this is where the tuners for the acoustic are. Um, this, this was the first version, yeah. And these are probably not the ones you have on the final one, because this was tough to do, right? Finding the, finding the tuners. Because you didn't want them to be too long. These are a little bit longer, and that means you would have them maybe on your body and maybe you know, the, the tuning would go off. Um, and, I mean, headless nylon is, is weird anyway. Um, 
You only put one pick up in just to test the idea. But this doesn't even work because you don't even have a plug. It was purely for, let's, let's check out how this can function. Um, I don't know what, oh, you literally did a do-it-yourself time up up here. I assume on the other one you actually have... What does that mean? <laughs> you, you drilled holes in here and tied up the strings. Oh, yeah. yeah on yeah. the other one, this is more professional, right? Um, actually, it's the a, it's a same, it's same? It's, it's same version, but, but this one is... Uh, I've done it in two minutes. <laughs> okay. And the other one maybe in two days, I don't know. <laughs> two days to drill six holes. Yeah. That's where your money goes, people. Professionalism. <laughs> so... The point is, and, and as you can see maybe here, no, you can't. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, you can. No, let's see, go back to the other camera. You can see a little bit of a hint of neck throughness. So these are two necks all the way through uh, with side, uh, side parts. These are probably just kitchen countertop. You, you didn't want to waste anything. Um, so now let's look in depth at this monstrosity that apparently is still being held by their butler. Can you call in your man? Yes. Would you please just bring Henning the guitar? These people are not! Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Butterman. And here it is. The Yoshi Luck. Ha! I'm distorting every single time I say the name. I don't know if we could come up with a better name. Please comment below if you have a better name for this. But I don't know. Two letters said very strongly. Heavy acoustic? Why not? I mean, it depends on heavy. You could play jazz on the electric. Um, so, we're going to go through stats, which I don't know, because I'm too lazy to remember. Uh, <laughs> wait, we need a thumbnail. That's what we need, first of all. Wait, how do I do this? I do, I do this. I don't. I'm learning now, Leslie. You see? I, I need thumbnails. Wait, I'm doing Stevie T phase. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Good, okay, thumbnail done. I'm, I'm gonna guess things, okay? Because I like guessing. Mahogany in the middle. Yeah. Mahogany, mahogany, mahogany. Um, maple. And this looks like one thick ass piece of maple. There, it's one piece next. Okay. Um, obviously. Beautiful flame maple veneer. Veneer, okay, good enough. Looks pretty. Um, uh, you did veneer because you didn't want to take too much of the mahogany off, not to save money, obviously. Ha <laughs> I I thought to um, to build it like he had it on, on a picture. I had to do that. Okay, he, he had some flames uh, mm -hmm. on on the both sides. Um, and he originally wanted blue. Yeah, um, I mean, there was a gray version too, but, but a blue one, yeah. Yeah, the first one was blue, the second yeah. one was gray. How did he talk you into not blue? Uh, let me look at this beautiful boot, the color. Yeah, and then I remembered some old, old uh, uh, guitars from the 80s in natural mahogany. Mm -hmm. I thought, yes, maybe just natural wood and black hardware is, is a nice thing. It makes it a little bit more exclusive. If this was, let's say, a, a, uh, just an opaque, like only you know, no wood or whatever, just the blue, it could look cheapish. It could look like you know, some, some Jackson, whatever. This, this looks like a, a man took wood and formed it into something. Um, I was, I think, even more scared that it could be too much. Because your first version, you had a lot of knobs on it uh, to 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 yeah. to um, for any kind of sounds, mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, if we do that and we make it in blue, maybe it's going to be just too much. Okay, so that, that that was, I think, why I tried to to keep it simple. I even in this version, I think it's a little bit option overkill considering the the pickup configuration but we'll talk about that i mean it's custom whatever anof wants anof gets that's the idea here yet i will still bitch about things that i wouldn't have done so if i would have done that wait i wouldn't have done that because i don't need this guitar but he does and that's the point the point is if you go to a custom luthier 
that you go into a shop and work with them. And don't, don't call up Fender and say, build me this. Um, that doesn't make sense. Go to someone that you can work with on a one-by-one -one basis. Support your small luthier people. Or specifically, Yoshi. Um, so we're going to look. We, we talked about woods. We have Seema Duncan pickups. This is a doubly one. I don't know what they're called. And this one is smaller. And this one's a doubly one again. Um, and we have... That's the cool thing you get with custom people. You have a wooden pickup ring, or actually two of them. I've got to see that I don't bang this. Look at this. Wooden pickup ring. That's cool. I like that kind of shit. And then we have this bridge. Wait, what's happening back there? What's the... They're, they're being so... What the... need to hire a butler because apparently you get brought things Yoshi can you can your guy work for me too you have to ask him I don't know butler man could I uh, could I get a coffee wow you guys are awesome you can come all the time um so uh, the, the the bridge tell me about that what is that what what brand is what bridge brand do we have it's an ABM ABM from Berlin, really high-end stuff, and this is obviously the ABM uh, headless thing, and that's that. Uh, so the bridge and the stop tail, or whatever you want to call that, yeah. it, it's it, they go together, those two, right? Okay. Um, this you made. The bridge, yes. Yeah. So the acoustic bridge, you made, and uh, the is that a bone? Yeah, yeah. And then you have a piezo under that. Just a passive piezo. Okay. And the, the, <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, <laughs> uh, so these tuners are difficult to find, I guess, right? Because look how short they are. They don't protrude. And I mean, this is probably something very, very difficult to find. It's pretty cool. And obviously, when you're on stage, Arnold says, not a problem. I'm going to call a little bit bullshit on that because you're, you're on stage, you want to tune. You don't just go like this. You literally look like, oh, okay, that's a D. You know, it looks like you're playing with yourself. Come on. He's smiling. He's like, yeah, that's what I wanted. So, <laughs> I mean, even if I do it like this, look. I mean, come on. I'm sorry. I'm literally now tuning the way that I would tune. Wait. Were you aware, are you aware of that, that your audience actually thinks you're playing with your dingling? You don't care, right? You think the groupies think I'm playing... Okay. <laughs> okay. From where, you, where you're sitting, look at this. It's you know, I, I would never <laughs> thought about that. Of course you didn't think about before, that. Before you, you, you just said that. Of course, know? because I'm the perf here. Right, I'm the perf. You put them there, Okay. Um, and if you're very, very skilled, very skilled, you can do it hands-free and you tune it with your dingling. Well. <laughs> if your dingling has enough grip strength, <laughs> then you can do it. You don't know where I come from. <laughs> okay. You, don't, you, you know where, how the area is called where I come from in Austria? Uh, what? The valley, the Geiltal. Ah, okay. Geiltal. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well... Maybe this um, explains some things. <laughs> for, for those that, that understand what the word gal means, that's where it's from. So, um, these tuners, when I, when I tune the <laughs> nylon string, they work beautifully. They actually work better than traditional nylon string tuners. I, I had no problem getting it in tune perfectly. And that's already an achievement, if you ask me. Um, and the other achievement I think that's pretty amazing is... There's one electric cavity. I would have assumed the guitar on the back has a lot of cavities, but it doesn't. There's one small one right here. And obviously getting the piezo bridge to come over here is relatively simple. But there's pickups and a switch up here. And can you see a cavity here? No. Yoshi is smiling very proudly, as he should, because... Somehow, he managed to get all this wiring down here without drilling more holes in the guitar. That must have been a bitch to do, right? 
um, I could say something funny for you at the moment, but I don't do it. Okay, don't. Do, do whatever you want to say. How did you, I mean, how did, it couldn't have been easy to get that done. Well, um, I thought about it to, 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 to open it at the back, mm -hmm. but uh, I found a, a, another solution for it. Hard work. Um, might have something to do with having the switch right here, uh, so you could drill all the way straight. <laughs> See, I'm not as stupid as their butler looks. Um, so the five-way switch is actually up here. Let's magnify that. And it also has a wooden plate on it. That's just all sexy, se sexy stuff. So let's look at the, uh, the nuts. They, of course, have zero frets. Uh, that's a metal one. Metal! And that's a uh, bone. And here we have probably ABM. That's an ABM one. And here we have the, let's just tie it up in two holes. That took him two days to drill. You have a very slow drill. She said, ha, get it. Mm. Uh, 24 frets on both. And I'm going to say ebony fretboards. See, I don't even need you guys. I know this. Okay, so before we run it through its paces, as we do here, we need to talk about pricing. This guy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Butler man. Very kind, very kind. Courtesy of Yoshi Lux Butler. Strong but good. Oh, uh, knobs. We have volume, tone for the electric, volume for the passive piezo for the acoustic. And both of these can be pulled for single coil for the hamburgers. Um, that's the one thing where I would have said, stop right here. Because we have a five-way switch where we have these kind of in-between positions. That makes it extremely versatile. But is that really super necessary? I don't know. Do you actually use like the single core settings? Sometimes. I understand that when you get something built like this, you want to go for your investment to get the most out of it and get everything that you can. But realistically, we're talking about five positions and then you have the ability to combine it with single cords, which gives you uh, uh, five, six, seven, not eight, nine. Oh, wait, and then in the middle, it's not the middle pickup, it's actually just the outer, so that's 10. So technically, it's 10 different sounds. No, no. 10, 11, 12. 12 different sounds. You never counted, did you? Yoshi's like, what do I know? Okay, let's count. Both down. One, two, three, four, five, okay? In the middle, it's only these two. So when I'm in the, in uh, then in the, in the front, I've got single coil, that's six. In the back, I got single coil, that's seven. In the middle, it's not this pickup. It's actually these. So I'm at seven. Both of them up is eight. Single coil humbucker is nine. Humbucker single coil is 10. And then this doesn't change whether that's single coil or humbucker because it's only one of the coils, right? In, in, in between position. Okay, okay, so we got 10. 10 different sounds. Which is uh, an Ibanez AZ with a tap switch has 10 different sounds. And that's what they're pushing. They're like, oh, it's got 10 different sounds. Well, this one does too, plus acoustic. So 11 bitches. But of course, for sound 11, you need a whole different neck. Pricing, which is something we need to talk about. I know any luthier, especially having to build the prototype. Think about this. I mean, there's a, how many days for the prototype? I don't know, maybe a few weeks. Okay, a few weeks. Working on it here or there, not... You know, if, if you know something, how to do it, then it's not a problem to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't really know how it's going to be, or what are you going to do um, to, um, to um, don't break the next step, then I need just time for it. Yeah. So the thing is, any sane person would figure such a sp such a specific project and building a prototype for it any sane luthier would figure the time and work invested in the prototype to be on top of the price of this that that should happen 
Well, Yoshi doesn't do that. Yoshi just builds the prototype and says, okay, now I know how to do it. And he doesn't charge for it because, you know, he insane. But that's how he is. So technically, if you ask me, I see this, I look at it, I know who built it, I know how good it is. Um, I would say starting at 8, probably more in the 11 or 12 region. If you went to any bigger brand uh, building something this custom, uh, I'm not going to name any brands, but I know some brands that would start at 15 and then start talking to you. You know, okay, 15 is the base price, what else do you want? So... um, Yoshi, how much would you charge if I ask you to build this right, right again? Just again, exactly that way. Exactly the same. Exactly the same way. Just in purple. Five two. Fifty two hundred, which of course isn't an you know affordable guitar, but it's ultra custom, spec'd to Arnulf's Arnulf's Arnulf's. It's difficult to say. Uh, wishes, dreams, and specifications. They spend weeks on figuring out the next. I think you brought some guitars and you compared it to your to your favorite guitars and stuff like this, right? Um, obviously, the acoustic neck is a little, little, bit, little bit chunky. It feels like a similar shape. Yeah, the shape. Should... Shape's different, but of course, it's wider and a little bit thicker. Um, this is a... I'm bad with Cs and Ds, but I'm going to say that's a D? I don't know. Well, it should be a D, but just a little bit uh, out of the middle. It's asymmetric. Ah, it's an asymmetrical... So, yeah, who, who cares? You got to play the damn thing. Of course, you can't play the damn thing because it's in Arnold's, you know, house. Just go to him, ring the doorbell, say, Henning sent me, I want to play your guitar. That's obviously possible. So, um, we're going to start with the acoustic side, um, which I'm running into a couple of things. Um, as you can show, I'm running it into the Fishman Aura, which is taking the passive piezo and turning it into uh, kind of like a mic sound. But obviously, we're going to uh, take that off as well. Uh, and then we got this um, acoustic gig from Carl Martin here, which is perfect for, guess what, acoustic stuff. Um, so we're going to turn all that off, and then we're going to show you how you can sculpt that sound, which you, of course, would do in a live situation. Um, to taste, okay? You know, some people like the really direct sound of a piezo. That's totally fine. Um, I'm trying to show you how far you can take this, which is really not an acoustic guitar, um, and turn it into something that rem uh, uh, reminds you of a mic acoustic. What's going on back there? They're going to be drunk by the end of this. Um, so it's got this little helper here to play it sitting down. Uh, I'm going to put a little anti-slip mat on me because I'm not used to these kind of shapes. Um, oh, why electric here and acoustic here? Well, Arnulf has a, an answer for that. Um, when you're sitting down, you're usually playing acoustic. You're not really jumping around on stage playing acoustic standing up. So this is in a more natural position um, for an acoustic. This is an unnatural position for an electric guitar, but usually for an electric guitar, you're standing and then it's hanging down a bit. And actually, usually these double necks look huge, but look at this, it's, it actually doesn't. It, it looks rather compact. Now, Arnulf, when you're on stage and you're playing acoustic, are you sitting? Yeah. And when you're playing electric, you're standing up? Yeah. So you actually change positions. Sitting or on a high chair. Okay. Somehow okay. that I have the, the... Because I would think that once you're here, playing the acoustic would be difficult, right? Okay. So we've covered this. So, no, oh, that's off. Here we go. What am I going to do? Oh, you have to unplug. Man muss auch einsteigen. So here we have the pure piezo out.
Why can't I play it anymore? Something about Aldi Miola. Look at these people. They have, they're having the life. That's a decent, direct sound, no question about that. And you have volume and that's all you have, so that's it. So I'm gonna blend in the aura now. Now that sounds miked. That's a really cool thing. So uh, that would be a great accompanying pedal with this to really, in a live situ situation, get that uh, miked nylon sound. <laughs> Put some acoustic kick on there, a little bit of compression, a little bit of reverb, and then we're there. It's a very satisfying acoustic sound, especially for live. It absolutely will perform what you expect out of a nylon string in a live situation. Would you record that in a studio if you actually have a real nice acoustic nylon string and a good mic? I might if I'm lazy because it, it'll do the job. I'll probably mic an acoustic, but in a live situation, hell yeah. some echo on it too. admit it's I'm not shitting you guys it's a pleasure to play um, it's just it's flawless it's beautifully set up uh, and the sounds just jump out so with the stuff I put on there I actually feel I'm getting an acoustic sound a, a real nylon string sound um, and the playability is like an electric with a wider uh, wider fretboard is this true nylon string width of the fretboard um, not really but almost I think it should be should be fifty two at a saddle. Mm. I don't know, but it's yeah, forty seven. Um, yeah, forty seven, forty eight. It's a little bit like the nylon string ovation, so the nylon okay. string fenders mm -hmm. which you get. Um, it, the sound is amazing. I mean, the guitar <laughs> looks like a freaking metal instrument, but um, that part of it is. I mean, it still looks metal, but the sound. Oh, that's the wrong thing here. <laughs> I accidentally did something cool. Look, there's a flageolet in there, as we say, or a harmonic. Didn't want to do that, but that's cool. It's almost as if I know what I'm doing. If I could do any of this, 
you know, then I would be all cool. But I, I don't know how to do the. La 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 la. I don't know how to do this. I okay. Done with that. It works. Um, the one criticism I'm going to hurl at this, and that's obviously a choice that they made, is switching this off only works with the volume down there. So doing this in the middle of a song, which I think is necessary, they disagree, and it's their guitar, so maybe they're right, but I mean, of course, I'm right. I mean, obviously. Um, that doesn't happen when I'm going from here to here, doing this. So... I would like a button that literally switches this off and this on, and this on and this off. Because, let me demonstrate. So I'm turning the acoustic all the way off. Um, and the electric now is on. Oh, okay, so if I'm playing the acoustic, That's awesome that you can do that. So this sound is off, but this neck is, of course, invoking sympathetic resonances in these strings. So it sounds like this happy sound, which is absolutely beautiful. Put some effects on there and it's to die for. However, you're playing live. There's some gain on here. Um, the drummer is beating the shit out of the kit. And these strings are open you will want to be able to mute them. Arnulf made a good point. You probably have your arm over them, but still, I, uh, you won't have your arm over the acoustic side when you're playing electric. And I would assume it's doing the same thing. Those are cool sounds. They're additional sounds. There are two more sounds you have. We're at 11, now we're at 13, and I'm not shitting you, they are cool additional sounds. And obviously being a piezo, the body vibrating will also, you know, trigger the piezo. So um, I would like some kind of easy switch to turn the other side off. They don't need it, it's their guitar, they can do whatever the fuck they want, I would want that. So when you order your HA! then um, order it with the switch. I'm going to do this so many times that Adolf's going to go home and do this when people ask him, what's the guitar called? Watch him. Ha. Mm, that's, that's not, that's, that's lame. Um, ha! See, I got you. Uh, okay, turning the acoustic off. What did he put in that coffee? So. Um. We need to mute this. Of course, uh, I'm sorry, you could also do that. On the acoustic gig, I have a mute button. So I could just mute the acoustic side. Or you have an ABY switch on the floor and you just pick whatever you want. Obviously, that's the easy solution. If you have the money to buy this, you can buy an ABY switch. From Wahlbruch, The Crossroads. Watch my video. We want all clean. That, of course, is the Sky King Tone King, that's the, no, the Tone, I never get this right. The <clears throat> Tone King Sky King, on clean. And we're gonna go into more amps, obviously. Second position. It's not too different. My choice would have been to go out of phase to get those in-between Fender sounds. Uh, I think that would have expanded the palette a little bit more than this. It's kind of the same thing. So if you had that hollow sound, that's what I would have gone for. Let's see if it changes once we go single curl on this. Little bit. Single chord by itself. It's hamburger. 
And as always, that's not a single chord sound. That's a wiry sound. That's a thinner sound. But this is, it doesn't sound like a single chord. Why? Because it's not a single chord. And it's not in a single chord guitar. This doesn't have a trem. It doesn't even have a head. It's got a neck through. It's never going to sound like a Strat. And that's not Yoshi's fault. That's not Arnold's fault. That's physics, people. Because physics are real. Except for those Americans who don't like science exists. That's kind of cool. If I push this a little bit with, uh, how do I do this? I'm gonna. It's cool. Look, stuff moves. Here we go. There's a considerable difference uh, when there's a little bit of drive on it, and that's nice. It's not a single chord sound, but it's, it's spanky. <laughs> Moving on to the middle position, which is these two. That's cool because it kind of has an acoustic vibe to it, which many of you would want in your electric to kind of simulate an acoustic. On this one, it's totally stupid because you have an acoustic! You don't need to simulate one! You'd be stupid to simulate an acoustic sound when you can just go to the other neck. But if you didn't have the other neck, that's a cool facsimile acoustic. And then single car in the back, come back in the front. So you have a lot of options here. A good, and then in between in the back. Again, just like in the front, not too different. I would have gone out of phase. But it's not my guitar. Okay, that's the very back. Let's give a little bit of drive from the Chase Bliss Preamp Mark II Automaton. That's what it says on it. That thing sounds awesome. Not the guitar, the pedal. Actually, it's the combination. <laughs> rather good. And actually, the position of the electric doesn't really bother me sitting down. It's not like it's up here. It's uh, here. So that's, that's a classic rock sound I can very much live with. It's got that attack. I mean, it could also be these coded DR strings, but it's got that very direct... Uh, spanky modern guitar attack. I would equate it to something like what Mayonnaise would do, where you don't have, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like a Les Paul, it doesn't sound like a Strat or a Telly. It's got a neutral kind of modern, fast, attacky thing, which is of course neck through and all those uh, ingredients that account for that. <laughs> Right. And I love that there's no inlays in the fretboard. That just makes it clean. I 
I'm trying Van Halen. I don't know what I'm doing. Clearly, guitar that Van Halen would have played had he had the opportunity to work with Yoshi. Of course, Yoshi doesn't work with just anyone. If Eddie walked in, he'd be like, nah, too many stripes, right? Yoshi would go like, Eddie, go home. I don't do stripes. Well, I'm not really sure about that. <laughs> Dude, fuck off with your stripes. I don't do stripes. But I have the money and I'm Eddie Van Halen. No, no stripes. That would be cool, though, if you did that. Just saying. Well, first of all, I think he has to come in my workshop. Before that, I have no chance for it. Eddie, please go to Yoshi's workshop in Cuba. Um, and it's literally over there. And uh, be turned down. I want to film that. <laughs> okay. Um, so we go into a couple of different amps, as always. We're going to start with the Morgan AC20 uh, for a... AC20 kind of a voxy sound. I always do those chords, I don't know why. That's the first time that that nicks in the way. Other than that, it never has been. And it just don't don't just don't do that to this. Well, I learned something yesterday. How does it go? Um, ben Eller showed me this. I need some delay! You know that song? It's a good song. Um, I don't know. I've had too much coffee! Um, so that sound works. And we're going to go into the plexi. Little bit fuzzy, muddy there with both of them. It might be too much humbucker. That's Stradia. I don't know, what amp do you play? He's gonna say, if he says Kemper, I'm gonna kick him out. If he says Helix, I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. So let, let's, let's see where that grin takes us. I don't know, what amp do you play? What is straight meter in English? Uh, a floorboard thing? A floorboard, yes. But wh what? Which uh, one? Plan 6. Helix? No, the smaller one, the Firehawk. Firehawk, okay. It's always those people with the really amazing, super boutique -y guitars that send it through digital stuff. And don't get me wrong, Firehawk's pretty cool. It is, it is, it does a lot of stuff, and especially for a live situation, you can even do like the acoustic stuff, but realistically, put this through a real amp and listen to what this thing can do. Because that Firehawk will suck a lot of the life out of this. And look, I've got a Helix over there. I, I like this stuff. It's, there's a good point for life. You're already carrying this. You don't want to carry a 100 watt amp, but, but play it through a real thing. Once the video is done, you'll play it through a real thing and then, then we talk. Like for example, this JCM 800. Because a Firehawk doesn't sound like that. Look, I love you guys from 96, really good stuff, but I mean, you can't do. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And we move on. That was the JCM 800. We move on to the orange rocker bird because why not? Because you might have an orange and decide that you want the ha from luck. <laughs> Just to get those riffs out of the way because it's fun. <laughs> Let's not do that. That sounds amazing. We're gonna go, uh, let's do the ref last. Here is uh, the um, Synergy Ecstasy module, which is killer for leads, so we're gonna lead it. We're gonna push it. Random. That sounds amazing. Um, the most important thing to remember is we can always do this. It can always get you down. You know, mood-wise. For those classical death metal bands, you, you would do this. That's your intro, and then the vocalist goes And then, you know, blast beat, and then you hit this button, and you do this Actually not that, uh, you would do Actually you wouldn't, you'd go vintage 30 Remember? And then... As, as some stuff metal people play. This is a good genty thing because it's very precise. See what I did there? Switcheroonie. Uh, obviously, looking at Arnulf, let's just show Arnulf back there. He's very clearly a modern gent player. That is his forte. That is what he does. He gents his ass off. <laughs> no, huh? No. Um, I will call this a masterpiece of a guitar because it can literally not be compared to anything. So tell me it's not a masterpiece of its kind. Because there is one of its kind, and that's this. And you can, it's still slipping and sliding. <laughs> How do you hold this? Um, 
You can get something like this from Yoshi. If you're in the US, yeah, call him or, you know, go to your Luthia of your choice. This is something that you can get from a very skilled craftsman, or as they say, artisan. Yoshi is an artisan. Jason. Hello, young man. How are you doing? I'm, 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 I'm making a video. I'm, you're in the middle of the video, right there, Jason. Oh, so I'm going to be in the video because I called in the middle of the video, aren't I? Yes. Do you want to see what I'm reviewing? I saw a double neck flying V or something. Where did you see that? Maybe it was just a reflection that's there you go. Right there, look at that. What the hell? But that's nylon string. That's yeah, it. That's cool. Wait, wait, do that face again for the people. <laughs> that is cool. Dude. Nylon string, passive PHO, HSH, flying V, neck through. And 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 wait. Headless. I saw that. Who made this? Who made this? Uh, the guy on the right back there. The guy on the right back there, you're a mad genius. <laughs> the, guy, the guy on the left is the guy that paid for it. Well, you do know how much I love a, a, a double neck guitar. So. Oh, God, you're that, also one of these people that has double neck. Uh, you all need to form a club of the crazy people. Um, I shall uh, uh, call you back. And then, of course, as you guys know, it's Jason McNamara as they say in Australia, who puts shrimp on the barbie and is a crazy man with a really cool show where he talks with famous people on his crazy famous people something YouTube thing. Uh, check out Jason uh, McNamara. McNamara. I'll put that here. Um, so, anything else you guys want to add to this very informative, straightforward video? No. I, I don't, don't. I know they're not uh, men of many words. They are men of many necks. See what I did there? See? <laughs> Thank you for letting me check this out. This was a pleasure. Hopefully I clickbaited the fuck out of this and you people watched this. Um, if you made it till the end, uh, say, uh, Yoshi is a crazy genius in the comments. Or, uh, Anuf needs help. Either, either, you know, any of those, comment. The point is, oh, that's what Anuf actually wrote me in an email. I think what's very important with a custom build like this is that in the end, for your money and the time invested, you're happy. And Arnold wrote that he is more pleased than he think he would, thought he would be. He's happier than he thought he would be with the instrument. It came out better than he could have imagined, and he can't stop playing it. And that's the idea. The idea is that the Luthier makes you happy and that, you know, you got the thing that you dreamed of. Even though sometimes it looks like when you're tuning it, you're twiddling your bits. I mean, you are twiddling your bits, the guitar bits. Boy, I'm not funny. Wait, let's let's ask the queen of funny. Leslie, is that funny? Nope. Nope, she says. Okay. Um, I don't know if Yoshi has a website. He probably doesn't even because he doesn't People want people contacting him because that means he would make money. So I'll put whatever links I can find below this video. Um, thanks, Arnold, for letting me check this out. And... Animals at the end. Thank you, too. Time flying by Thoughts are trapped inside a black hole No sleep tonight Rest till everything is sat in stone So I won't stop trying Till the sun goes up My body's tired But my mind won't stop I won't back down Until I've reached the top